So today we're going to talk about nonlinear inequalities. We've talked about linear inequalities. Those are those straight lines. Remember the shading where we did the graphs and we shaded like a half plane, things like that? We're going to talk right now about firstly quadratic inequalities and then rational inequalities. See what those things are, are for, see what they look like. So first off, we're going to talk about some quadratic inequalities. Now, do you remember quadratic equations? Remember the quadratic formula? x equals minus 3, all that stuff. They dealt with the x squared, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to be doing, only now in an inequality. So quadratic inequalities look something like this. Is that quadratic? Yeah. What makes it quadratic? x squared. Yeah, yeah, it's power 2 right there. That's a quadra that is a quadratic. That's what we mean. Hey, by the way, could you factor that? Well, could you try to factor that? <laughs> could you use quadratic formula on that? Absolutely, that would work all the time. You guys still with me right here? Yeah. All right. Now, that's a quadratic expression. An equation would be if I have an equal sign. Right now, we're going to deal with that thing. That's what makes it an inequality. So, is it quadratic? Yeah. Is it inequality? Absolutely. We're dealing with quadratic inequalities. I'm going to give you some steps over here. These are kind of your general steps. The first thing you're going to do, you got to make sure this is in what we call standard form, which means we want this everything on one side and zero on the other side. Why? Well, the only way we know how to work with quadratics is if everything's on one side and zero's on the other side. You with me on that? Mm -hmm. So we want everything on one side, zero on the other side. That's called standard form. So one first thing, we're going to write this in standard form. And we mean everything on one side and then some inequality and then zero. That inequality, by the way, doesn't have to be that particular one. We could have a less than, a greater than, greater than, or equal to, any of those things. So step number one, write that in standard form. Hey, let's look up at the board here real quick in our example. Uh, folks, is that in standard form? Yes. Yeah, everything else on one side, zeros on the other side, and we have that inequality. Now, do you remember, hopefully you do, do you remember a long time ago when we did the linear inequalities, how we temporarily set that expression equal to zero? Instead of having the inequality, we had the equal sign. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. We're going to do the same thing here. This is the only other part in the history of mathematics where you temporarily change an inequality into an equal sign. And it's simply so that we can solve it. So step number two, you're going to temporarily write as an equation, and you're going to solve it. So instead of looking at the inequality, we're going to say, okay, let's make that an equal sign for now. Temporarily, we're going to set that thing as an equal sign. The only reason why we do this is so that we can solve it. Ladies and gentlemen, first thing, what would you try to do with that equation? Now it's an equation. We've done this before. What do you do now? You try to factor. How long would you spend factoring? And then after you tried to factor for 10 seconds, if you couldn't do it, what would you do? Okay, factor. Okay, so you're factoring that thing. Uh, hopefully you were able to factor this. How do you factor it? Sweet. If you weren't able to factor it, of course, we could still use quadratic formula to get the same exact answers that we're about to get. Are we done right now? No. Yes, no, folks. Are you guys? No. Okay, so we're going to do the x plus 4 equals 2. I'm sorry, equals 0. And the x minus 2 equals 0. We'll subtract 4, we'll add 2, and of course we're going to get x equals negative 4, x equals positive 2. 
So far so good? All right. Now, we've done the first two steps. We've made sure it's a standard form. We've temporarily written as an equation, and we solved it. However, this is where a lot of people are going to leave it. Look, if you leave your equation right here, it's like this doesn't even exist. Because this is what you would be doing from here down, right? This would be like stuff we've done in chapter 10, I'm sorry, chapter 11, point one, two, and 3. That, that's it. This, this, is, this would be it right here. This has to mean something. Now, here's what this means. This means that you're going to have some intervals that work, and you're going to have some intervals that don't work. If you remember about the, the like linear inequalities and the absolute value inequalities, remember the interval notation we had with the brackets and the parentheses? Mm -hmm. We're going to have that stuff again. Here's how you find out what intervals there are. Up to this point, this should be very, very easy for you. Uh, this is way old stuff at this point. This is, chap this is actually chapter 7 stuff. You know how to fact priority. Here is the new stuff. Are you ready for the new stuff? Yes, Hopefully you're ready. Are you ready? Yes. You ready? Okay. Here's the new stuff. From here on out, what you're going to do is you're going to write a number line. Do you remember what a number line is? Mm -hmm. What's that? Number line? You're going to write those solutions on a number line. I'm going to move up, up here so you can see this really clearly. Write these things on a number line. You know what? It doesn't have to be the scale or anything. You don't have to have a zero on it. You just got to make sure that these are in the correct order. That's all you got to do. Make sure they're in the correct order. So on number line, which one's going to come first, ladies and gentlemen? Negative one. Good. And then? Those are the numbers you need right there. Now, watch carefully. These numbers are going to reappear. They're, they're going to appear again in your intervals. You, I guarantee you, you're going to have a negative 4 and a 2 in just about 3 minutes, okay? You just got to figure out, how many intervals do you see, by the way? You only see two intervals? Tell me something. If you had a loaf of bread and you sliced it twice, how many pieces would you get? You only get two pieces? You have a loaf of bread. You cut it once, how many pieces you get? Two. You cut it three or twice, how many pieces you get? Three. So how many intervals do you have here? Three. One, two, three. You with me on this? Um. Now check it out. Some of these intervals are going to be true. They're going to work. Some of these intervals are not going to be true. They're not going to work. It's up to you to figure out which ones work and which ones don't. So so far, standard form, easy. Write as an equation for just a little bit, easy. This is just so you can solve it. Easy. It's factoring your quadratic formula. You've already done that. Take these things, put them on a number line, and then you're going to test a point for each interval. Are you with me on this? You're going to test a point for each interval. So step four, here's the big step. This is the most important step for you. I, I can almost guarantee you that everyone's going to be able to get down to here because it's just factory. So step number four, for each interval, you're going to test a point. Not negative four and, and two, because those, those are actually on the interval separations right there. But something between here. What's between here? Zero would be a great point to check, right? That's easy. What point is over here? Yeah, maybe three. How about over here? Negative. Yeah, not negative three, right? That's in this one, but negative five or something. You're going to test those points. And do I want to test it in my equation here or my inequality? inequality? The equation, that was temporary. We go back to the inequality. So for each interval, you're going to test a point in the original inequality. <coughs> So step five, I'm going to write right here. Now, what's going to happen is some of the intervals will be true, some of the intervals will be false. 
The true intervals, you're just going to write those true intervals in interval notation because those are your solution sets. So step number five, last thing, write the true intervals in interval notation, that's your solution. Okay, shall we give it a try? Firstly, can you give me a hand raise if you're okay on the standard form, the temporary equation, temporary, this is not what you check later. The uh, solving it down to your points using the factory and the quadratic formula and then writing them on a number line raise your hand feel okay that, that far. Good deal, okay. Now comes for the most important part, the checking. Uh, by the way, again, what point are you gonna check in this interval? Zero. Check zero if you can, oh my gosh, that's so nice. Write the point you're checking up top, okay? Now, how about this one? What point are you going to check over here? Three. You can check whatever you want. Three, four, five. You just can't check two. You can't check two because that won't tell you anything. Uh, how about over here? Are you seeing where I'm getting those points, ladies and gentlemen? It's just one single point in that interval. You test those in the original inequality. I'm going to do this piece by piece so you can see it. You're going to show the work on your own. but. I'd say, okay, here's my test for negative 5, here's my test for 0, and here's my test for 3. For negative 5, what this says is you're going to go back to your original inequality, simply plug in negative 5. See what that gives you. So negative 5 squared plus 5 times negative 2, I'm sorry, negative 5. Oh, I screwed that up, didn't I? Yeah. Have my numbers reversed. 2 times negative 5 minus 8 and you're checking to see whether this is greater than zero. Do you remember doing something like this before? Remember checking that and see if it was true or false? It's basically the same idea, you're checking a point. So here we're gonna get, how much is this gonna give me, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, everybody should be playing along here. And then plus or minus 10? Minus eight, bigger than zero. So this says that, if I do that math correctly, 25 minus 10 minus 8 should give you a 7. Hey, here's what we did. We checked one point, this negative 5, in my original inequality. It said that 7, ultimately, 7 is bigger than 0. Is that a true statement or a false statement? True. Definitely a true statement, right? 7 is bigger than 0. So that's true. What you're going to do, you're going to put a true right there in that box. That goes true. Now, you, you, you can trust me on this or you can do it for yourself about 100,000 times to see that what I'm about to say is going to be true. Uh, but your intervals will alternate. For quadratics, they will alternate. Uh, and here's the reason why. Do you remember talking about quadratics, how they're, they're parabolas? Mm -hmm. And what we're really doing is finding where you cross the x-axis. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. So this crosses at two points, negative four and two. It crosses there. So one interval is going to be true, positive, then false, negative, and then true. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be true, negative, false, positive. True. Either way, these things will 